Hello and welcome to this series titled The Successful Way to Build a Modern Team. You're joining us today for the first episode, which is titled Attracting the Right Team Members. I'm joined by my co-host Adrian Fedini from Train Group, and you guys are going to love this episode and this series. It's all about how to, I suppose, build a thriving team in a modern day business environment. So sit tight and join if you've got any questions or if you'd like any follow-ups, by all means, all you have to do is reply to either wherever you've seen this post come through, whether that's on social media or maybe you saw it in an email or better still, if you're in our thriving Facebook community, jump in there and ask the question because Adrian is in there and he is a very active member. So that's all from me. Let's jump right in. Hey, Sight Shedders, let me ask you something. If you could travel the world to amazing locations and do it in a way that you could claim it as a business expense, would that sound like a good idea to you? Well, let me tell you about a little program that we've got running at the Sight Shed. Back in 2016, we kicked off our travel and learn program, and the first one we did was ski and learn in New Zealand. We took a bunch of Sight Shed listeners and Uh, I suppose, podcast trade business enthusiasts over to Wanaka. And we skied in the morning. We did a business workshop in the afternoon. And we did that for a week. And only in February of 2018, we did the second one in Hakuba in Japan, where we, once again, we took a bunch of site shed enthusiasts across to Japan. And we skied in the morning, did a business workshop in the afternoon. And guys, the reason we put this program together is because, like, we know... it's hard as business owners, as trade business owners, when you're tied to location, it's very hard to get away to amazing you know, destinations around the world. And more to the point, when you do want to travel, you often do it in a way that you, you, know, you want to make sure that it's justifiable from a business point of view. So we thought, why not combine the two? Why not make an amazing business experience and an amazing holiday and tie it into one? So that's what we've done. And these travel and learn programs are so fantastic and you can head across to the siteshed.com forward slash events to check out what's been in the past and what's coming up in the future. But what I want to talk to you today about is the one that's coming up in July, which is the very first Surf and Learn program. And that Surf and Learn program is going to be held in the Maldives. That's right. We're taking a group of site shedders over to the Maldives and we're going to be doing the full boat experience, which is going to be amazing. It's a bucket list item for a lot of people. We've chartered a luxury yacht and we're going to be spending seven nights on a yacht touring around the Maldives, around the atolls there, surfing amazing locations, diving, snorkeling, hanging out, having a great time. And of course, we're going to be running a business workshop in there as well. So you'll be able to invest in your business in a beautiful, beautiful location while sitting on a luxury yacht in the Maldives. So it sounds like a pretty good opportunity, uh, I am sure, to a lot of you guys out there. Uh, the caveat is, of course, that we're going to be on a boat and boats have limited space. Uh, as it stands, we only have about five spots left. So if it sounds like something you want to do, head across to the siteshed.com forward slash events and uh, you can navigate towards the Surf and Learn Maldives page there where you'll be able to see all the information relevant to the trip. And of course, you'll be able to secure your position with a deposit. Anyway, that's all from me. Hopefully, I'll see you there. Otherwise, we'll hopefully see you at one of the future events. We're going to be doing a lot of these. So ski, surf, ski, surf, ski, surf. And we may be throwing in a few other ones in between. So (laughs) that's all from me. giving tradies and contractors around the globe the tools to run a modern business. You're listening to Toolbox Talks from the Site Shed. Now here's your host, Matt Jones. Hello, listeners, and welcome back to the Site Shed podcast. My name is Matt Jones. I'm your host and facilitator. And today you are joining us for the very first part of a three-part series, which uh, we have called The Successful Way to Build a Modern Team. And I'm joined by my friend and colleague, Adrian Fedini from Train Group. Adrian, welcome. Thank you very much for having me, Matt. It's been a while, but it's great to be back. Yeah, welcome back, I should say. Absolutely. So, um, Adrian... For, the, for all you regular listeners out there, um, you would have been familiar with the series that Adrian and I, well, that we recorded a long time ago. I can't remember how far, how long ago that was, but... Um, I think it have to be close to almost two years now. Yeah, I think you're right. It was it's going back. What have I got here? Yeah, it was, 2007, it was July 2017. There you go. So 
That series was selling with confidence, it was called. And we went through knowing your hourly rate, finding the right customers and selling to the right customers. We also did it from A to B with Adrian, where we talked a little bit about his story. But in the last uh, 12 months or so, Adrian's, uh, your business has taken a bit of a bit of a segue. Uh, not massive, not a massive step sideways, I suppose, but sideways nonetheless. So sort of tell us a little bit about where you were and where you're at these days, mate. Yeah, sure, Matt. So um, we were originally called Train to Sell, and we were focused predominantly on sales training. And uh, as we kind of evolved and grew, we uh, discovered there was a massive need for more than just sales training. I mean, there was there's an obvious need for management training, uh, marketing training, leadership training, and so on. So we are now called the Train Group. Sales is definitely uh, one of our top focuses, but uh, we have now grown to a team of five, and we, we have such a Deep team, a depth, I guess I should say, of the team. We have some marketing experience with a gentleman by the name of Paul Steer and Alejandra Kolazos, who's who's got an advertising and marketing background. And um, yeah, we've we've kind of basically focused now on business training is our probably our number one product line or service. And then two would be coaching. And then the third third I guess product or service we deliver is business process. So the actual creation of business process. Now, I won't let the cat out of the bag too much, but um, uh, the audience can certainly expect to hear a lot more uh, from a little collective group that we're putting together. You are and a few others, so um, I won't I won't go too much into that at this point. But that is going to be a massive industry shakeup, so you can all look forward to that one for sure. Unbelievably exciting! I've actually got goosebumps to just the fact you're talking about that. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, Adrian, obviously you're a, you're a very active member within our Facebook community. And for listeners out there that are not part of that community, get in it. It's free; it won't cost you anything. It's all run through Facebook, uh, private Facebook group. So you can head across to uh, Facebook and search for the site shed in the groups and you'll find us and then you'll just request to join. And the lovely Talia will let you in if she likes you. However, one of the conversations that we have had, I won't say recently because it's been something that we've, to be honest, kind of covered on before, but I, I feel like we need to dive in a little bit deeper because there's been so much talk in the group about it. And it's uh, it's around building a team. And I know there's a lot of a lot of companies around the world, not just you know here in Australia, but a lot of the companies we speak to in the United States, Canada, UK, that kind of thing, they all seem to be struggling with the same thing. And that is, you know, how to build a team, how to retain your staff, how to keep them, you know, keep them loyal and all that kind of stuff. So we've come back around and we thought we we're going to readdress this and get a little bit more granular on some of the topic so we've split this series down into three episodes and we do that purely because we don't want to overload you guys we want you to be able to take something practical from each episode and hopefully go and apply it <laughs> so that's really the, the uh, seems to be the bottleneck in a lot of cases but uh, we've broken it down into attracting the right team members uh, the second episode is keeping them striving and the uh, third and final uh, episode of that series is going to be not a job a career so, Adrian, this to me is a pretty uh, straightforward path that we've taken here in leading into the next with these topics. And I know from my own experience, you know, these are things that are certainly relevant to me. Like, how do you find the right team members? How do you how do you keep them motivated? How do you keep them, you know, on board and, and excited? And then how do you um you know how do you retain those staff? Like, how do you keep them? I suppose. Uh, you know, how do you keep them loyal to you and how do you keep them part of that team and how do you keep everyone sort of, you know, how do you create unity, I suppose, as as the yeah. uh, the great Peter Cox would say. Great question. Yeah, so, I mean, look, the first episode, we're going to die. We may as well just jump right in here and talk about attracting the right team members. Um, for, for the listeners out there that, are, that this is, that they are interested uh, in this sort of topic, we actually did a series not too long ago with um, Danny Kerr from BT Academy. Um, that episode, this episode 132, and it was called Attracting the Right Team. We we're talking a little bit more about that. Uh, a little bit more about the marketing side of things in that episode, although the names sound somewhat familiar. Danny was talking a lot about tactics that you can use to attract the right team from, you know, writing attractive copy in your ads when you're placing the ads, where to place them and all that kind of stuff. However, in this episode, Adrian, I'm hoping to dive a little bit more into into the mindset side of things and, you know, attracting the right team members and, um, you know, how, how that looks more, f- not so much from an on-paper perspective, but a little bit more about how that you know, how that looks from the back end. You know, how can we make our business yep. look attractive sure. to somebody that might be, you know, looking for employment? Well, that's a, it's a perfect segue. That in, a, in actual fact, that's the first point 
um, I'd like to make rather than saying, oh, and I hear this every other day of the week, oh, I can't find any good team members. It's so hard, it's so hard. And it is hard. There's no doubt it is hard. But what, what we do when we do that, we put kind of the blame or the responsibility on the actual um, pool of team members or, or potential staff out in the marketplace. And I like to flip that. So instead of kind of being powerless and pointing the finger and saying, hey, look, there's not much out there. It's really hard. The, one, the good ones are always uh, already got a job. Start to think about what you and your business can do to become really attractive to uh, team members and potential employees. Mm-hmm. So what, what are you doing? Basically, are you, are you going out there and uh, setting an example as a leader? A couple of years ago, I think you know, I went out there and uh, had a boxing fight. And half the reason I wanted to do that is to basically go and say, look, if, if I can go out there and do something that scares me, I'm someone worth having a chat to about potentially doing something that scares you. So it's a, I guess it's a form of leadership in some way. Yeah. So what are you doing personally? And also, too, what is your business doing? Are they winning awards? Are they getting acknowledgement for um, being great in the marketplace? Are they picking up acknowledgement from industry experts, et cetera, to make sure that they're uh, positioned in a place where you go, yeah, that's a good company and I want to be a part of that company? Adrian, I see a very common scenario and I'll – be 100% honest with you, I've been guilty of it oh, uh, and I've been the, the, both the recipient <laughs> and, the, um, and, and the person in charge of doing this incorrectly before where you, know, you go out there recruiting for staff, you might find someone that ideally could have been a really good fit for the organisation and just a pure inability to onboard them correctly and basically support them through those initial, st- initial stages led to you know, the failure in that relationship. Do you find, I suppose, in your coaching business, you know, that's, that's a, a mindset thing that a lot of people struggle with or a paradigm that a lot of people struggle with as business owners? 100%. It, yeah. it probably would be 80% of the reason that people like the churn and burn kind of uh, scenario where somebody comes on board and they leave within six or 12 months uh, is because they haven't been onboarded correctly. So it's absolutely crucial that you have an onboarding process and, and it's very simple to follow. And uh, it actually it actually kind of jumping a little bit ahead, it actually leads me to my second point about attracting the staff. Have you elicited what your values, what your company values are? So, for example, um, my, my three values, personal and company, are leadership, passion and knowledge. So w- when you start to stand for something and, and basically uh, there's a great quote, um, the man that stands for nothing will fall for everything. And um, basically, if you don't have something that you identify with, stand for, then other people don't know who you are or where you, where you sit. So if you start to say, here, he, basically, this is a starting point. These are our three company values. So when you meet somebody, whether in, even if they're not actually coming for an interview, you might bump into them at a supplier and you kind of run your, your, your rule of thumb over, are they exhibiting the three values that I stand for? That could be the very first part of helping you find that right staff. And also, too, when it comes back to the onboarding process, you need to make sure that those three values aren't just what we call platitudes or just um, service value. How are we as a team in our onboarding process and in our day-to-day business living and breathing those values? We interrupt this podcast today to talk to you very quickly about Tradie Web Guys content creation program. That program has been designed specifically for trade-based organizations as a way that you guys as trade business owners can start creating content that enables you to engage better with your customers and your potential customers. It will enable you to build trust and build rapport because what you're doing is you're investing in educating them. Biggest problem that we see with our customers today is that they're not regularly updating their websites. And that's a problem because first of all, the search engines are looking for that. And second of all, potential customers are also looking for it. Trading Web Guys content creation program has been specifically designed to help you get regular relevant content on your website consistently every month. We know that it's hard when you're out there on the tools and we know that sometimes you don't always have the time to be able to do these things yourself. So we're taking it off your hands for you. It's a service that we're offering for you guys. We want to make sure that you're getting this done because we know how important it is. Anyway, head across to tradywebguys.com.au forward slash content, fill in the form, and one of our representatives will come back to you. So I'm curious, like when it comes to, I suppose, communicating those values to potential employees, what does that look like? Like, how do you go about 
you know, sending that message out without looking like a complete tosser or somebody that's just basically, you know, like there's a lot of those, you know, oh, these are our values. We do this, this and this. Would you like to be a member of our team? Like all that sort of bullshit, which I think today people kind of see right through. Like how do you go yeah. about I mean, I know the purpose of this podcast isn't necessarily to talk about how to communicate, you know, or the, to market the, the whole thing. If you want to listen to that, we can go check out Danny's podcast. But like, I'm, I'm curious from a communication perspective, how it, what, what your stance is on that or what your thoughts are. 100%. You look, we check with ourselves every three months. Are we basically living our values? So um, I don't want to give too much away, but for, for 2018, we uh, one of our brand promises is growth for experience. So that is through leading in our community by being involved with charities, by doing stuff that will um, uh, test and measure, uh, test, sorry, no, test and push our clients. So basically you need to make sure that where are my activities based in the calendar year that are going to actually exemplify those values? So, right. for example, if it's going to be leadership, what are we doing in the quarter between June and September that's going to exemplify leadership? Does that make sense? Yeah, I'm just curious how you would communicate that to somebody that doesn't actually work for you. Like, what's the what's the message you're trying to cast to the market? You know? Yeah, sure, absolutely. Well, it'd be highlighting through social media, and also um, your your existing team is probably your best vehicle or, or method of talking to the actual market about what you do. Yeah. So if you say that these are your three values, yet you don't have those events that I just mentioned, then when a you, you, one of your team members goes to have a beer at the pub with another tradie, they go, no, they're full of crap. They don't follow those values. But yeah. if they say, hey, last Tuesday, we went and um, did X, Y, and Z that really was amazing. It was all about leadership. And now they're, they're, actually, um, they're actually practicing what they preach. So social media would be one way to get the message out. Um, actually doing it so your team go and share it with the market and um, yeah I can't think of a third off the top of my head but yeah those two would be very <laughs> those, those two would be very powerful so I, I, I want to just take a bit of a, the emphasis off the team member side of the, the name of this podcast and put it onto the word right so how do you what's the process there in ascertaining if a person is the right person for the right role in your organization yeah two words cultural fit yeah and again it comes back to values uh technical skills are important but they're not by any means the be all and end all so when you've got uh, you've probably heard this a million times when you've got the right attitude the skills are something that you can train at a later date Mm -hmm. so if someone's trying uh even if they're not 100 percent successful as long as they're trying and putting in an effort and actually making the, all the right movements and gestures to go and be part of that or to, to, to try, basically, then that, that signals to me that they're the right people to get on the team. I mean, look, there must be – I mean, that, that, that all sounds good and it's sort of a little bit unicorns and rainbowy. To, I mean, really, I mean, if, if you're not looking for a, you know, for a plumber to fill a position like as a technician, they've got to have some level of qualification. Well, absolutely. There's no doubt they're going to be fully licensed, and they've got to have the the. If look, it's it's funny. I, people, are, I've had um ninety percent of the businesses we work with are maintenance businesses, and I've had people say, no, no, I can't employ anyone for the construction um, space because they don't understand maintenance. And then some of the, the some of the most amazing team members that have actually joined some of my clients' teams have come from construction, and the reason they've been successful is because of the right attitude. They, they of course, they didn't know how to find leaks as as well as they could in a, in a plumbing sense. But, yeah, because um, yeah, they, they kept trying. What's your take then, I suppose, on – I mean, obviously, there's going to be – okay, fine, people have a good attitude. They have a good attitude. They don't have a good attitude. It, it is what it is. However, there's also a lot of different types of people out there that have different types of personalities, and different types of personalities will suit different types of roles within your organization in almost every instance. Like, you can pretty much guarantee 100% that your accountant is going to have a significantly different – Yeah personality type to somebody that's you know uh, a sales technician within your business so my question i suppose is you know how do you how do you go about attracting the right team members for the right roles within your business yeah great okay so uh you know and i know you're a fan of disc as well one of the actual uh technical or the physical things we do is carry out a behavioral assessment the term personality uh, assessment is not quite right it's all about how they behave mm-hmm. so to kind of follow on from that example you just made about the accountant or someone that would be in control of finance or something that's meticulous and high attention to detail 
they're going to have a different behavioral style to somebody that's going to be in sales that's basically a bit more outgoing, a bit more gregarious, and a bit happy to, to go and talk to a room full of strangers. So they, they could be potentially a conflict and not be the inverted commas right mix unless they have an awareness of how each other behave. Mm-hmm. So it's really crucial, apart from looking for attitude, that you do understand and have a really gr- good grasp on how different people in different roles will behave and making sure that they know how to communicate with each other. So is it a matter of then when you're at the, say, at, at the stage of, okay, we need to find somebody to fill this role, we now want to figure out what type of person we want in this position and we want to figure out what their behaviours are like, what their habits are like, what their personality is like, how they communicate. Like we want to establish all that stuff before we even look for the person. Yeah, absolutely. Benchmarking. Yeah, exactly right. Um, benchmarking is a very powerful idea. You can either do it a number of ways you can do it. You can do it off existing team members that are doing the role quite well. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then also, too, there's some, some, sometimes there's industry benchmarks that you can go and uh, reference. But the, the key thing is you've got to know what you're looking for. And an, another phrase, if you don't know what you're looking for, you kind of take anything. But if you, you're clear on right. what their behavioral style is going to be, what skill set they're going to need, then it makes it a lot easier. You, start to, uh, you set that filter so you know who you, who you need to be talking to so you can save a lot of time. So it kind of leads us, I suppose, into you know the next point, which is okay. Well, where do you where do you go looking for these people, and where do you how do you find like where do you go fishing for the people that are the right people for that particular role? Because I'm guessing different different personality types or behavioural types or whatever you want to call it, they're gonna you know they're gonna have different sort of scenario places where you can find them, right? Yeah, great question. So it comes again back to culture, your culture as a business. So if let's say you've got a very uh, active, a lot of tradies love going to the gym, they love sports and so on, how can you start to prospect for members around sporty clubs, the gym that you go to? Maybe let's say you're, you're – um, uh, I, I was talking to someone last week, they loved car racing. How, how do you go and find people that are – car racing might be more for business owners than it may be for team members, but how do you go and start to find people that are sharing the same um, goals and values yep. and trying to, trying to grow? So definitely start putting up job ads around your gym, around your sporting club, talk to your mates. Also, too, talk to the people inside your team. They're the ones that are going to have to work with that team member more than anybody else. So, yeah, it, it, there's, a, there's a whole bunch of different ways that you can go and fish where the fish are, so to say. Yeah, okay. Because, I mean, I know, you know in the past we've had people on the show that have a really, really good framework in place for using your team as a recruiting engine to find staff because you know at the end of the day you would hope and, and in most cases it's it's pretty accurate you know the people that that hang out with people that work for you are gonna may or may not may or in many cases may be a very good fit for your organization so we may as well find people that they can i suppose refer to you because then at least it makes them somewhat accountable as well yeah mate what i heard was that basically you've had people in the past that had a very good framework around using the current team members to go yeah They've got to work together. Is that? Yeah, 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 yeah. Couldn't agree more. At the end of the day, they're going to be working with the team members more than they will with um, you as the business owner. Yeah. So it's it's crucial that they they there this harmony. I mean, one one person that doesn't share the same values or, or has got the same cultural fit as the rest of the team can, can bring a team of twenty people undone in a heartbeat. Yeah, exactly. But yeah, it's absolutely crucial. Okay, cool. Well, I suppose. Okay, so in. Just before we move on to the next episode, uh, Adrian, is there anything that you would like to leave with the listeners out there, any sort of framework or any starting point um, in relation to attracting the right team members? Um, I suppose something preferably that they can go and apply. (laughs) Yeah, absolutely. It's very simple. Uh, It all starts with us uh, as the business owner. So what can you do? How can I set an example? How can I uh, be attractive to potential team members. So rather than uh, laying the, the responsibility or the blame at the market, what can I do? Can, sh- should I go and uh, start to put my company up for awards so then that gets me some PR or some attention? What can I do as an individual to go and lead by example so then people go, wow, that's a great leader. I want to follow him. I want to go and yeah. so I can rub off what, what they're doing for me. Yeah, love it. All right, brilliant. Well, mate, thanks for joining us um, back on the show. Thanks for your input into uh, the first part of the 
the successful way to build a modern team series. Um, that was part one, listeners. That was attracting the right team members. And uh, we will be coming back with a following episode uh, probably next week, which will be keeping them from uh, keeping them striving, keeping your team striving. So, um, Adrian, thank you very much for your time. Uh, listeners, if you want to get hold of Adrian, there will be links within the show notes where you can get him. And um, there's also a little call to action there, isn't Adrian? You've got some uh, little cool video, uh, little video modules that you've been sending out on a, on a weekly basis to anyone that need anyone that would like them. Yeah, Matt, that's right. Um, one one of the other ways, and we're going to get into this, I think next week uh, is about training the team. Uh, the way that we've decided to start this off, only for our clients, special freebie for you guys, is basically ninety second video coming to your phone every single week on a tip on perhaps sales or leadership or management. Uh, basically, a little snapshot straight to your phone so you can digest it in, two, in, in less than two minutes and move on and do what you need to do. Beautiful. All right, mate. Fantastic. Well, thanks for your time again. And that is a wrap. We'll be back next week with the following episode. Thank you, Matt. Thank you for listening to another episode of Toolbox Talks. If you're liking what you hear, then you can head across to the siteshed.com where you can join our community by signing up to our Toolbox Talks. Uh, you'll get sent a weekly notification which is basically a highlight of everything that we've spoken about during that week along with any other industry news that may be relevant or specific to the trades if you're enjoying the show you can head across to itunes stitcher or soundcloud where you can leave us a review Uh, that would be fantastic and all the reviews get read out in the show Uh, likewise if you have any friends or colleagues that you think would benefit from the show and the the episodes that we create then please go ahead and share it with them